Welcome back to the evolution of kitchen design part two. So today I am hoping to get through the 40s, 50s, maybe even the 60s, fingers crossed on that one. But because the format of just pictures worked out well and got a lot of favorable comments, we're going to stick with it. The only drawback was people missed the cat. So here you go. Here's Audie. Uh, he missed being seen too. So now that Audie's out there, everybody should be happy. And when we come back, we're going to just jump right into kitchens again. So just very quickly to refresh your memory, these were kitchens from the era between 1910 and 1930. It can be very, very hard to pin down exactly when these kitchens were photographed, mostly because designs really didn't change that much. And there was no real standard kitchen. As long as you had a sink, a stove, a, an ice box or a refrigerator, and a table, a work surface of some sort, that was a kitchen. Then what happened, and, and we're still living with the consequences of that today, was that efficiency experts got involved in the process. And people began taking apart the things we simply ordinarily did with our lives and tried to make them more efficient, tried to explain why we were doing it, what we were doing wrong, and how we could improve it. And this picture here, the kitchen work triangle, has been with us since the days of efficiency experts. People decided there was a right way to organize a kitchen and a wrong way to organize a kitchen. And they started telling us how we needed to get it done. You couldn't cram all your appliances together. You had to have a smooth workflow from one surface to another. The sink should be between the refrigerator and the stove and etc. etc. This is also the period that set our modern kitchen design. So let's go into the 40s with our photos. Now this first photo, as you can see, is recognizable as a modern kitchen, but just barely. We clearly see the refrigerator, or at least half the refrigerator, on the far left. We see the stove in the middle, and mom is standing over a sink that has a pull-down lid to extend the countertop. Now, notice here that our, our surfaces, the top of the stove, the top of the countertop, even the top of the sink when that little countertop lid is pulled down, are all going to be roughly even. This is kind of new. We didn't see that in previous photos. Uh, next up, there's a reason I put this in. I rarely, rarely find pictures of the kitchens of minority families. I look for them too because frankly, I, I go through the internet all the time, grabbing photos of living rooms, of bedrooms, of kitchens, of what have you. And when I can find the home of a family of color, oh boy, I'm going to grab it. So this is quite a rarity. Uh, no surprise, it looks like anybody else's kitchen. It's just that I personally find it annoying that all of the kitchens I find are kitchens of 
white people. Whether they are rich white people, middle class white people, poor white people, doesn't matter. It's just every face is the same color. So I wanted to throw this in because I would love to be able to include more diversity if only I could find it. This picture, by the way, uh, we can see what is a very nice, very modern refrigerator. And that's on the left. You can see part of it. And on the right, you can see the very edge of a modern stove. So I would have loved to have seen a little more of this because this was clearly uh, a home with state-of-the-art appliances. All right, this next one, this photograph was actually dated in the early 1940s. What I want you to notice here is it's not all that different from the images we saw from 1910, 1920. The old-fashioned Victorian pantry cabinetry and the old uh, porcelain over cast iron sink. That sink is huge. That sink is gorgeous. Even as late as the 40s, these kitchens were still in use and things had not become fully standardized. Not just yet anyway. We are getting there though. This one, we are starting to see what we would recognize as a modern kitchen. We have the built-in cabinetry, we have the countertop, but please note, uh, now yeah, you have to know what you're looking for in order to be able to identify this. On the left-hand side, we have a stove. This is a wood stove. And uh, the reason I can tell is that cast iron top with the burner cover lifter sticking out, yes, that is a wood stove. So even when we were in this transitional period, we were still working out how to integrate our existing appliances. Mom has brand new countertops, looks like she's got a brand new sink, but she's got a stove that was probably a good 30, 40 years old. This photo, mom is ironing, um, you know, I'm going to say that's a dish towel. It's got a cluster of grapes on it. Oh, my. She's ironing in the kitchen in front of a typical stove and refrigerator of the time. The stove, boy, that's, that's a little snappy looking. It's an electric. But you can see a lot of the new design elements in the kitchen. Standardized cabinetry, for one thing. And if you'll notice the way the refrigerator slips under the cabinet, they are making allowances for being able to scoot a fridge in there. So we're starting to see that extreme standardization that we're all living with today. This next photo is actually a refrigerator ad. And I thought you might like to see just what a typical 1940s refrigerator would look like. Interestingly enough, it doesn't look all that terribly different from ours. Although, please note, a lot smaller. It was smaller in height, in depth, and in width. Refrigerators were not the huge monstrosities we have today. Mom could easily see over the top of her refrigerator and we're also taking a look at some very, well, I hate to say it, but very dull, bland cabinetry. In the 1940s, the cabinets were still white. White was the kitchen color for decades. But in previous years, because the cabinets were um, furniture grade pieces and not mass produced assembly line pieces, they had more style. They might have nice bits of woodwork. They might have had paneled doors. No, we're seeing 
plain Jane cabinets now. So here we go. This is another flooring ad. And I love the flooring ads because they're all over the place. And because they were just trying to show off the floors. When you take a look at the cabinetry, that's simply what was out there on the market. They weren't showing off the latest and best cabinetry. That wasn't their product. So they were just showing you what they felt was a typical kitchen in an elegant home. Once again, we have very standard white cabinetry, although it's highlighted because some of this is painted green, obviously, to match that floor they're selling, but still, colors coming in. These countertops, uh, this was um, a type of formica. It was like a melamine product, and it was laid over plywood countertops and fastened down with metal edging. The edging had a small piece that curved over the top and then you just sort of nailed it into the edge around the cabinetry. So you'll notice the table has the same edge. It's matching, a uh, very clever little thing. But this was what countertops were. It was basically plastic. Whereas in previous generations, we would have had high quality products. We would have had wood. We would have had porcelain. We would have had granite, marble, soapstone, depending on what part of the country you came from. For most people, it was probably wood, but still, it was a natural product. Plastic had the advantage of being easier to clean, and obviously it would look good but only when it's new. It scratched up, it was very easy to mar it, very easy to damage it, and unlike wood, you couldn't sand it down and shellac it when it got old looking. So, in my opinion, this was a major step backwards. Also, this dull, plain Jane cabinetry, now, I don't see that as an improvement either. On the other hand, boy, does that floor look spiffy. Here's another picture of a kitchen. This would have been, um, I'm guessing, the, the sort of high end of middle class kitchens. These are housewives in the kitchens, not maids. Again, if you'll notice, we have that same metal edging around the countertop, but the new feature in this is that, that flush and level countertop, sink stove countertop, and the range is fitting right into an opening in the cabinetry made for it. Also, we have that work triangle here with the refrigerator on one leg of the L, sort of anchoring that leg. Then we go over to the sink, then we go over to the stove. So this is that work triangle they were selling us on. This next one is an ad, and this is an ad for, uh, I believe it's the range they're selling here. But once again, what we have is plain white cabinetry. We are, however, seeing more color in the kitchen because that red countertop and the countertops we've seen with color in the other pictures were red. So red countertop with that metal edging and we see the red being picked up on the walls and, of course, this is that wonderful red and green combination that we saw in uh, the 1954 decorating book. So I'm going to guess that this is probably later 40s. Um, the skirts are not long enough to be 50s, but I think we're a little bit past the Second World War. This picture is also an advertisement, and I believe what this is selling is the cabinetry. 
this cabinetry is metal. It's, it's steel cabinets that have been enameled in white. And if you will notice, the sink area has a full steel sink integrated into the countertop backsplash. The whole thing is one piece. Uh, we're only seeing a small section of this, so I'm guessing this is what they were selling. It's not likely we would have seen steel all the way through on the countertops. It probably would have been that same um, melamine plastic with steel edging. But the sink area, and this would have included the sink and sections of countertop going at least a foot and a half on either side of the sink, all in steel, which was pretty new. And of course, these steel uh, manufactured cabinets. Now, this final one, in 1940s, this was uh, a model home. These homes were uh, inexpensive. They were put together quickly. The target market was returning servicemen who were getting married and starting families. This would have been a real kitchen in a real model home. Um, the woman is clearly coming in to examine the kitchen to decide if she wants to buy the house. And please notice, once again, we have those prefab enameled steel cabinets here. That had become a very big thing. They were very, very inexpensive, very versatile. You would buy them in any configuration from maybe a, a single cabinet 18 inches wide to a whole bank of cabinets extending uh, along a 12-foot wall. Uh, they were flexible because you could buy your cabinets, have them installed. Oh, and they were lightweight. I mean, Mom could just pick them up and drop them into the kitchen herself without any assistance, screw them into the wall, get your cabinet, or get your countertops placed on top of them. It made kitchens much more affordable, but it also made them much more standardized. Now we're going to go over to the 1950s now, and uh, I'm I'm going to try to stay away from the mid-century modern on this because I want I want to show you real kitchens that real people would have been buying and working in. So. Our first picture here, and this was by the manufacturer of these cabinets. Uh, and we've got a couple pictures from the same manufacturer. But once again, it's all about the cabinetry. And please note, cabinets are still all white. We are right into the 50s at this point, And our major kitchen color is white. What you see here is the flexible designs they were offering so that you could have little end caps on your countertops with open shelving and, you know, you could get a lazy Susan for the corner. You could get a section with drawers if you wanted drawers. You could get a section with uh, cabinets, cabinets and drawers. By the way, the concept that we have now of a drawer on top and a cabinet below for our kitchen base cabinets. That comes to us from this period. Uh, this is what they decided we would have back in the 1950s, and we've been living with it ever since. This is another image from the same cabinet manufacturer. And again, if you'll notice, all white. Everything is white. Um, these these little open shelf units on the end. This is something that's that, that's interesting. We don't tend to 
do much of that anymore. But it was a major design element in, well, in the 1950s, going right into the 1980s, some small open shelving area like this, either at the end of the bottom cabinets, or as you can see in this image, you have them um, on the end of the upper cabinets near the windows. That stayed with us for a long time. It's not a thing nowadays. You just really don't see that very much. But once again, we're talking about these metal kitchen cabinets, and they were all the rage. This was something that everybody either had or wanted to have back in the day. All right, this is not the same company, but this is also from a cabinet manufacturer, and it's showing the versatility of these kinds of cabinets. Uh, we have an ironing board pulling out of one of the cabinets. We have a stove, and you can pretty much see the burners on the top. It's The stove is built in to the cabinets. We have an oven that's pretty much dead center toward the back of the picture. An oven, again, built into the cabinets. Some cabinets are higher, some cabinets are lower on the top, uh, making room for, well, the portable television set. Oh, wow. In the kitchen. So, and by the way, that was not a common thing back in the 50s. But we also have this odd little pullout from an upper cabinet that's holding clothes for when you iron. So, we have a fully integrated ironing center here. It also looks like we have a uh, a rolling waste cart, and we have the laundry in the kitchen. That, by the way, is very European. That never caught on in the U.S. We decided we wanted laundry rooms, and we just don't want the washer and dryer in the kitchen. Not popular for us. What we are seeing here, and uh, this is one of the reasons I included this photo, because I don't believe this is representative of the average kitchen by any stretch of the imagination, what we're seeing is a little bit of color coming in. The cabinets are no longer white. They're baby blue. Again, 1950s, and what we're seeing here is the little portable television in the kitchen once again, something that never really caught on. Uh, designers and kitchen cabinet salespeople thought it was coming to, but it didn't. Here, our kitchen is monochromatic. The, the appliances are pink. The cabinetry is pink. And they're all designed to kind of blend into this one look. Uh, by the way, if you look into the room beyond the kitchen, you'll see the washer and dryer are also pink. Uh, we also have what I believe is upper cabinets in a wood grain. Definitely very unusual for the time, but this one is as close to mid-century modern as we're getting. But I did want you to see this sort of let's blend the cabinets and the appliances and everything all into one. It was like they were trying to create this monolithic kitchen design. Everything's just going to fade into everything else. And by the way, that concept was, oh my gosh, right up until about 2000. That was still a thing. Uh, and there were special panels you could add to your fancy high-end refrigerator to make it blend in with your kitchen cabinets. Wowie zowie. This next image is all about the stove. And this is a, a large stove. We've got it next to some metal cabinetry. 
And you can tell this is metal cabinetry because of those preformed vents under the sink. And it has that um, steel sink with integrated draining board countertop thing that we've seen before on metal cabinets. But this would have been, I don't want to say a high-end stove. It would have been a sort of special purpose stove. We clearly have something on top, which I'm going to assume is a warming rack, although I have no idea what those squiggly little metal things are underneath it. I thought they might have been, you know, um, supports for glassware or, you know, maybe a wine rack, but you would never put your wine that close to your stove. So I don't know what they are. Perhaps you dried your laundry on it. This would have been a large stove, and it's a style and a design that never really caught on. But it does continue to show us that, notice the stove is white and the cabinets are pale green. We were starting to get a little bit of color. These steel cabinets had to be painted anyway. So, I guess they figured if they were going to paint them white, they could paint them any color you wanted, and they were bringing a bit of color into the kitchen. This next image is also uh, designed to highlight the stove. This stove is smaller. From the looks of that, I'm going to guess that's about a 24-inch electric range which one would find a little on the small side for a full-size kitchen. But hey, it's what they're selling here. Pieces like this were usually intended to be what we would call apartment appliances. A little smaller than for the larger home, but obviously... That wasn't everybody's choice. Some people were choosing smaller appliances. We are seeing some differences in the countertops here. We're seeing multicolors. The countertop appears to be a sort of blue-gray with an apron in red around the bottom of the countertop. And the color combination is picked up on the floors. Again, our cabinets are still white but we are definitely seeing color coming into the kitchen. Not a big way just yet, but we are still in the 1950s. When we get into the 1960s, we are definitely going to be seeing color. All right, this is what we have time for today. I am going to continue this series. I know some of you really like it. What I want you to take away from this is that we are still functioning in kitchens today that were designed for our grandmothers. And we need to think about that. Uh, we need to ask ourselves why it is that our kitchen doesn't match the decor in the rest of our homes. We need to ask ourselves why it is we are bending over countertops that are too low for us and not sitting the way Grandma did. We need to start looking at that because, believe me, it's, it's never too late to get comfortable in your own home. All right, that's what I have for you today. As I say, we are continuing with this. It's gotten a good response. I know a lot of you really like this. Next time out, we are going to take a look at kitchens of the 60s, the 70s. We're going right up to modern kitchens because I want to, I want to encourage you to question why we're still living with these antiquated notions of good kitchen design. All right, we're going to take a look at a slideshow on the way out. Uh, if you want to come back and join us this evening... We will have Just Chatting at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. If you're still into the antiques and thrifting, we're going to continue 
with kitchens next weekend. All right, have a terrific day. I will see you all next time. Thank you.